Rebecca on the line. Uh, Victoria Gray, Turtle Island News. Uh, good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Donna from the Two Row Times. Good morning, Donna. Thank you. Okay, so that leads us into our second item, which is there any changes or additions or deletions to the agenda? Seeing or hearing none, I'm looking for a mover and seconder to adopt the political liaison agenda of March 28th. I'll move, Audrey. Thanks, I'll second, second Melba. Audrey. Moved by Audrey. Second by Melba. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, we'll declare conflict as we move through the agenda. We have no delegations for this agenda. Uh, so that'll lead us right into the adoption of the political liaison minutes of February 28th. I'll move it, Sherry Lynn. Thanks, Sherry Lynn. Is there a seconder? I will. I'll second, Melba. Thank you, Carrie. Um, are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, our next item is the Lifelong Learning Task Force update. Believe it should be in your Dropbox. Not sure if there's any questions, comments. I just want to confirm with Teresa. Uh, is there an update within the Dropbox? Yes, there's an update in the Dropbox, and it was emailed out, too. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that, Teresa. So then I will look for a motion to accept as information uh, if there's no questions or comments. I'll move. I'll second. Okay, moved by Audrey, second by Sherry Lynn. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Number seven on our agenda, which is CAP team activities report for both February as well as March. Looking to any questions, comments? And if there's no questions or no comments, I will look for the same uh, motion to accept as in the report as information. I'll move, it's Melba. Moved by Melba, seconder. I will. Second by Kerry. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Um, I'm not gonna waive second reading on these pieces as we're just accepting as information. So I'll move right in then to the quote uh, for the 2022 uh, Moth Control Spray Program. 
So there's a recommendation in front of us. <clears throat> This is for Gypsy Moss. Is there any questions, comments? I'll move on that. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Carrie. It's been moved by Carrie. Is there a seconder? Second, Hazel. Second by Hazel. Is there any further questions, comments? I do. It's Melba. Um, I understand right now, if you look at the trees, that you can see the uh, white, little white caps where I guess the eggs are in. And I'm wondering, it's under my understanding, you can scrape that off as much as you can off the trees, off the trunks of the trees. Is there any consideration and discussion about that situation? Okay, I'll look to anyone uh, from our wildlife or stewardship office. Yes, Mark, I don't, I don't, not think, sure. I don't, Mark, uh, can you, uh, I don't think uh, Bethany. Hey, here. Lonnie. Yeah, hi, Mike. I don't think Bethany's on, uh, here today. Uh, uh, she's, uh, uh, she's on a leave of absence right now. So, uh, uh, but, uh, I can't comment on that on what Nal was uh, saying uh, uh, or or giving information on other than they did do the surveys they did go out and see where the the eggs were most uh, abundant and they chose to spray those areas where uh, uh, they detected the most the most egg masses so uh, uh, so and you know it's there was not the whole territory will be sprayed it just those those areas uh, uh, that uh, show the most uh, infestation. Yes. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Lonnie. Um, Kerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Melba's question, yeah, the, those eggs can be just scraped off and just let them fall to the ground or whatever. And because when it starts to warm up, the eggs will hatch into a little any small gypsy worms. So as much as you can scrape off, go ahead and do it. I don't. And then when they do spray, they have a map. They showed a map of last year where the where all the leaves were off the trees, eaten by the gypsy worms. So that's part of the reason why they did egg mass counts in those areas just to find out how bad it was. So like Lonnie said, they won't be spraying the whole reserve, just the, just the spots, but it's still gonna, well, amount to over a mill or just going by the price. Thank you. Mark, it's Thanks, Hazel. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Carrie, for that as well. And just really quickly, before I go over to Hazel, uh, yes, uh, to your question, Don, in the chat, we will get a map to our community. Actually, part of the resolution is that uh, our Six Nations staff uh, will be working to communicate um, exactly where this will be happening around the territory. Um, so that will be uh, communicated well in advance prior to it, it actually happening. Uh, Hazel? When you say scrape off some of the uh, egg mass, is that, or do they converge just near the trunk of the tree from the ground to where branches begin? Is that where they uh, hibernate all winter and then you have access to them to scrape them off? Or torch them off, you could do that as well. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, uh, Chief, yeah, you can, you can do that or do whatever, just as long as you get them off the trees and even if you gotta squash them right on the tree, you can do that or just, uh, I guess my question is, how far up do they go? Because uh, you can only go so far on a tree as far as um, removing the mass. Do they all stay? Do they all come down to the trunk of the tree over the winter? Is that uh, that's my question? The the majority of them are near the the trunk, probably within the first ten feet. But you oh, would yeah. see the odd egg mass a little further up, but it's. 
Oh, yeah. I, I don't think climbing the tree to try and get it. It's just, just as long as you get the most of them, as the ones that you can reach. Yeah, well, a propane uh, torch, they work good as far as getting rid of those, whatever those other things are, those big bags that are dangling down from the tree. Yeah. I think that, they're, they're not that gypsy moth, but they're something else, but you can destroy those by those torches as well. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that's, yeah, like you said, it's not it's not a gypsy worm, but it's a different type of worm that eats eats the leaves. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Hazel. And thanks, Carrie, for, for your uh, expertise in this area. Is there any further questions or comments? I do, it's Melba. Just wondering if a uh, community could be encouraged to assist in... Uh, less gypsy moths this year by looking at their own properties and actually doing some of that work with the scraping if they could do that yeah i think that's that's a that's a good suggestion melba and we'll work with our communications as well as the uh, wildlife office just to deem how community community can further uh, assist like you're saying and well that will be included in the communication thank you Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Melba. Are there any further questions or comments? Hi, Mark. It's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just jump right in. <laughs> sure. um, so I think, you know, it's great that we're talking about it amongst ourselves, but what if we do a public meeting and advertise it and do a session and pull in experts and community can ask their questions and we can have a, a good dialogue on it because it's a big issue in the community. And, and do a public session. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion as well, Wendy. Uh, and we can, uh, we can work with uh, our comms to set that all up as well. So I'm just making some notes here just to include these pieces with comms. Are there any further questions, comments, suggestions? Okay, seeing or hearing, and then it's been moved and seconded. We'll work on those pieces uh, that were suggested for further communication and dialogue. Uh, that being said, I'll look to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. I'll move. I'll second. He's moved by. Carry, second by Hazel. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, so we'll work on those uh, communication pieces uh, and start to get this in motion as quickly as possible again uh, prior to the actual uh, spring uh, and that we can again have further uh, dialogue and education on this, uh, on this whole matter. So we'll look to those pieces. Uh, that being said, I'll move right into the next item, uh, which is the Burkett Lane and River Road subdivision. There's a recommendation uh, that we support the work of the Survivor Secretariat uh, and respond to the City of Brantford that we cannot support the proposed development until such time that the Survivor Secretariat deems it to no longer be an area of concern. So that's the motion that it reads. Uh, is there any questions, comments? Hi, Mark. It's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. So I guess I'm, I'm going back and forth between the, the CAP um, report, the, the update, because City of Brantford is on there and there's two things going on. And they're, they're actually raising the issue that it's not moving fast enough. So I'm just, in terms of the flow of information and who's saying what and who's reporting what, how much communication is there between the Survivor Secretariat and, and CAP? Because I, I mean, I certainly support, if it's coming from the survivors, I certainly support it, but just making sure that we're saying the same thing through CAP, right? That they're on board, because I don't necessarily read that in the CAP report. Um, and, and sorry, I didn't talk earlier, but not to maybe after this, if we can flip back to CAP, because I do have a couple of questions that, um, in terms of action that's going on versus um, just input. So anyway, that's my comment. Sure, no problem. 
Okay, thanks, uh, Wendy. Just before I go over to Nathan, I'll look to, I believe, Robin uh, or Lonnie uh, is on the line. I know, I believe uh, the uh, Kim Survivor Secretary has met with CAP. I don't know to what extent, so maybe we can just pause there uh, and look to Robin or Lonnie or Taylor, whoever can assist. Um, actually, I know that um, I believe that Lonnie and Tanya, our archaeology supervisor, have met with the survivor secretariat, but the rest of the CAP team um, has not. So I have not personally met with Kim um, from the survivor secretariat. So I have only um, been... Tanya Hillmontour has been in communication with her. I personally have not. So I'm just kind of um, sharing what was shared with me through Tanya. Yes, if I could add, okay, thanks, uh, uh, could I add Mark, uh, to what Robin said, yes. Uh, I was in a meeting with uh, Tanya and myself with uh, Kim Murray uh, uh, several months back and we, uh, we weren't really uh, addressing the uh, uh, situation at Burkitt's Lane at the time, but uh, but Tanya has been uh, in contact with her uh, weekly with Kim, and uh, so the concern is that uh, there, before any uh, construction goes on on Burkitt's Lane, that the proper archaeological investigations be done first, uh, and uh, and Kim Murray is is uh, is cons is. Uh, has an interest in this because uh, uh, she believes there might, although we, we don't know, there might be some evidence of uh, of graves there, but who knows? It has to be investigated first. So, uh, so until anything really uh, uh, gets uh, moved forward, there we're in support of uh, of uh, of uh, the survivor secretariat to have an investigations done uh, uh, to satisfy everyone that uh, there's no concern there. So just to follow up, sorry. So, so with sorry, the downtown ahead, core, yeah, sorry, with the downtown core and the design phase to enhance that, is there any um, disconnect with that? I, I just want to make sure that we don't have two separate process processes going on that conflict. That's all. I understand that Tanya works closely with with the secretariat as well. So. Yeah, no, the downtown core is a separate issue and it has been cleared of all archaeology. So, and I don't believe that that is part of the area that the survivor secretariat has deemed of interest. Did okay, that thanks. Uh, thanks. It made me just get confirmation of it. That That's all. And then it's aligned. I don't think it is either, but. If we get the confirmation, then that would be great that it's okay. not part of. Okay. Appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Robin. Uh, Nathan. Yeah, I guess just a similar question around the the communication and, and awareness around this. Um, has uh, has a, a correspondence gone to Bramford to say either from the Secretariat or from Council? Um, just to give them that overall kind of heads up to say this is happening in certain areas uh, within um, your, your kind of development plan and, um, you know, it's going to be going on for the next X number of uh, years um, or, or year or, or whatever. Um, just wondering if that overall high level correspondence has gone to Bradford yet to, to kind of uh, indicate. I know they, they likely have seen it in, in the news and they're aware, but just that official kind of correspondence has that gone up? I'm not sure whether it's been actually an official correspondence, but the city of Brantford is well aware of the areas that the survivor secretariat um, is concerned about. They have been in contact with the Survivor Secretariat, have had meetings, have um, reached out as far as, you know, what they can do to help as far as providing maps, um, you know, writing special, um, a special little blurb on their applications saying that this, the area that they're 
proposing to build in could be an area of concern. And I don't have the wording right in front of me, but they they do um, let their proponents know that there may be some some issues regarding um, work that the survivor secretariat needs to do. So they are aware. And they have been working and just with the survivor secretariat. Thanks, thanks for that, uh, Robin. And just a further follow up as well. Oh, I see Tammy has um, has put in the chat, uh, conf confirming that the secretary provided a letter early last fall. And I know just through my uh, meetings and lunches with Mayor Davis, I know this has been a topic of discussion as well. So we've uh, discussed this piece, and I know that that's they're respecting all uh, areas and supporting the survivor secretariat. So I know it's. It has been formalized, uh, Nathan, in that sense. Uh, Phil? Yes, I, I think uh, that's what the whole purpose of this resolution is, is to confirm it and then council to make a formal letter notifying the city of Brantford hands off. Appreciate that. Thanks, uh, thanks Phil. We, we could further follow up. Is there any further questions or comments? Yeah, it's Melba. Yeah, it's my understanding, as was said by a couple of uh, of areas today, that uh, the City of Brantford Council Mayor, they certainly do support the investigation and whatever is necessary uh, in finding uh, the graves of survivors. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for that, Melba. Uh, Okay, I'll look to then uh, a mover in secondary for the recommendation again uh, to support the work of the survivor secretariat and respond to the city of Brantford that we cannot support the proposed development until such time that the survivors secretariat deems it to be no longer an area of concern. Is there a mover in secondary to that effect? I'll move it, I'll Wendy. Move it Melba. Moved by Wendy, seconded by Melda, Melba. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Wendy. Second, Moved Melba. by Wendy, second by Melba. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, we have no political updates at this time, but I will go back uh, to the CAP team uh, activities report. And I'll look to uh, Wendy for further questions, comments. Thank, thanks, Mark, and sorry for rerouting. Just when I was reading and I missed it the first time, but uh, Broccolini development, I just see the recommendation from CAP the developers acknowledge that the 10 one tree replacement ratio in addition to the 30 uh, meter buffer for provincial wetlands and going on to talk about that. So that those recommendations from the CAP team to the developer has have those come through council? Um, just because if there's if the developer moves ahead and if there's any controversy, will they go back and say, well, we did what the CAP team did. So in terms of political position and political action that takes that off the table. So just wondering about process. And there's a couple of other pieces too, where it's, um, I don't recall the recommendation coming back to council for, for action. So just wondering what's happening with that. No, the Broccolini, um, we are still in discussions with them and no, nothing has come forward to council at this point. But, but in the report, it says that CAP has made a recommendation to the developer and the developer has acknowledged it and is taking action based on those recommendations. That's what I read in the report. So if, if they're taking action based on your recommendations, that should have come through council, should it not? That's a good question. I was... Um, like that's just one of the um, things that we always mention with everybody when we talk to them. So I didn't, we didn't view it as a formal recommendation. 
is just one of those things that when we are talking to proponents, we ask for 10 to one tree replacement ratio. I, I guess the, the problem for me is that anything like that with the developer in the action, um, that means that they would make the assumption that they're taking the action that's necessary and they're free and clear to move ahead. Um, so, because when I look at the consultation and accommodation procedure, number six is anything has to come back to the elected council. So if recommendations are happening from CAP to the developer and the developer is taking action, then we're missing that step, I would think. Okay, so- we're, we're doing any um, assessment or anything. Yeah, and, and I can certainly do that. Um, my concern is, as I said, we do recommend that for everybody that we talk to. Absolutely, you know, all the any kind of development that is happening, we ask for that 10 to 1 tree replacement ratio. So do you want us to just stop asking for that? Is that like, I'm, I'm not sure. It's not a formal, it's just part of the discussions that we have. So it's not a formal recommendation. Is that something you just want us to stop asking for then? Like, I'm not sure how you want me to proceed from here. So so I, I'm just going by what's reported in the update. And it says <laughs> that the recommendation from CAT team, it doesn't say that, you know, there, there's an automatic process that occurs with everyone. So I'm looking at, at face value. My okay, concern yeah, yeah. is that, if, if, if I can finish, if, if this is happening, is there an agreement what's in writing to the developer to state that this is just an initial surface um, standard request? This does not elim eliminate any other um, issues coming forward so that we are mitigating any risk so that they don't think they've got carte blanche to do whatever. So okay. having that well mapped out. And you know, I think just any time that there's a recommendation action, whatever it is, big or small, council should be aware of it because if it comes back to, um, you know, to bite us later on, we need to be aware because then you get that fight between developers and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as I said, we are still in discussion with Broccolini, so that was not a formal um, recommendation, but I think Phil could probably add to this. Again, yeah, I'm just I think just to also, I, yeah, I don't need an explanation. I'm just reading what it says here, and I just need to know that is, is there a, an agreement that's in place, whether it's informal discussions, ongoing discussions, as soon as you make a recommendation to them and there's action, that begins a process. Thanks. Great. I, thanks. Uh, thanks, Wendy. And I know that we have, uh, Robin, you have even from CAP, I know I think I've signed off on one or two correspondence just to different effects and specifics to Broccolini. Uh, just again, I do understand the ongoing discussions happening and that further uh, recommendations is still yet to come back to council. So I know that's, uh, that's part, of, part of this as well, but maybe just really quickly, I'll shift over to Phil. Yes, I, I think maybe it's just clarification on the wording. It's just, we've got a lot of things to discuss with Broccolini. That's even if we come towards any kind of an agreement uh, that we can bring back to council for their consideration. These are just subjects that we bring up for the wetlands, protection of the wetlands, um, like the 10 to one ratios of, of tree replacements. But there's also issues with the land tenure itself and that we're challenging. So uh, we're a long ways from bringing anything of fruit to the council to consider yet. So just for clarification on that, Wendy, it's, it's a, it probably is just the wording of the, uh, of the summary record, uh, which is valid for sure. Yeah, get it clarified by all means. Thank you. So, so that's, that's great. I, I appreciate that. It's just not what the report says. So yeah. had, had the report said what you just said, it, 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 it's clarified. So knowing that, you know, this is phase one in these actions, but there are other issues. So for, for me, I can only go by what the report says and that's all the information I have on it. So um, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Wendy. Are there, Wendy, do you, is there any further questions or comments? 
I, I think sort of this discussion is general overall for the whole report. I mean, it's it's much better than it than it was at the last meeting. So I appreciate that, but just kind of giving that full story and very concisely. I mean, the, the other pieces of it would be helpful. Thanks. I appreciate that and thanks. Uh, and we'll look to note that as well, Robin, on your uh, on your report. Okay, that being said, then I'll look to, I know uh, Tammy just has informed me just under one political update, uh, the key way. So I know Jill is unfortunately not feeling well today. So Tammy can speak to uh, the item uh, that's under political updates, which is the key way. Over to you, Tammy. Okay, so in, in your Dropbox, Council, you would have noticed that there was a briefing note for, dated March 25th. And so this is just an update. Uh, you remember back in September, Council had agreed to put uh, a political rep at the table for a six month period just to see whether or not it was worth us sitting there. And so Councilor Sarah Lynn Phil Pierce has been Council's designate. And we also have um, Darren has a, has a appointed or went through one of our text people, Tanya Hill Montour, our archaeological supervisor, is also a member or sitting at the table. Um, at the time, we had also left room for um, Kim Murray, the exec executive oversight lead for the survivor secretary, to participate uh, should we think that it was appropriate. And so you'll see in the recommendation that it, it has been uh, worthwhile and that the recommendation is that Six Nations and the Grand River Elected Council shall continue with the appointment of a political representative and an alternate to the Keyway Advisory Group table. Further that Kim Murray, Executive Oversight Lead of the Survivor Secretary be invited by the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council representative to attend meetings with them as an observer as required. So if council's in agreement uh, to have Chair then Hill Pierce continue, then uh, we look for a mover and a seconder with second reading waived. Uh, it's Melba. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks for that, uh, Tammy. Melba? Yeah, I think it's only appropriate that uh, Sherry Lynn continue and, and I know that she he uh, wishes to continue, so I will make that motion, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Melba. Is there a seconder? I'll second that, Mark. It's Hazel. Okay, thank you. Hazel, are there any further questions or comments? Uh, I have a question. It's Wendy. Does Sherry Lynn want to continue sure, sitting there? Sure, go ahead, Wendy. Does Sherry Lynn want to continue sitting there? Yeah. So, so yes, we had the discussion with Jill and um, Tanya was there and um, yeah, I think it's, we still need to be sitting there to see um, what's going on. But again, just as an observer and still uh, do our own. So I'm okay with sitting there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sherry Lynn. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none then, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Favor. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Motion, Melba. Second, Hazel. Okay, thank you. It's been moved by Melba, second by Hazel to waive second reading. All in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Uh, okay, council, that's all I have for the open uh, agenda. I will look now at this point for a motion to adjourn. I'll move it, Hazel. I'll second, Sherry Lynn. Moved. Moved by Hazel, second by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you uh, to everybody for joining us this morning at Political Liaison uh, and looking forward to our next, uh, our next meeting. Take care and have a great day.